Um, I'm going to kick this off. My name is Emma Sullivan. I'm the Assistant Director of, of Alumni Communications. Um, welcome to our annual Alumni Leaders on Campus Day. This program is a collaboration between the Office of Alumni Relations and the College of Food Innovation and Technology and celebrates our alumni who are doing such great things in the industry. This afternoon, we have some amazing mm -hmm. alumni who are working directly in this field here to speak with you. And we're so grateful that they've taken time out of their busy schedules to be here. I know that you'll find their experiences and stories inspiring. I'd like to turn it over to TJ who will moderate this discussion. Although you may know him as professor or assistant dean or I don't know what they call you. <laughs> <laughs> they call me for things. I know that man. Add on okay. um, Thank you, Emma. I certainly appreciate it. Um, and thank everybody. Thank you to every everybody for for taking the time out of your class um, for for joining us. Um, I said we did this session. We did a big panel earlier today, and it was uh, it was awesome. It was incredibly engaging. Um, there was there was probably ten or eleven of us. I was just telling Jordan um, it was it was fun, inspiring. And when you sit back and kind of take a 10,000 foot view, you see this common theme. And hopefully that uh, Jordan and Kristen, we can have a much more kind of uh, robust conversation just about what, what we do, um, both um, at the, at the Ritz-Carlton and at Facebook um, and on Food Network. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for taking the time. I know that you're in class um, and I appreciate it. This is a value add. This is co-curricular, extracurricular. This is something that we would do in person, but we're doing it virtually because it's 2020. And we do everything virtually. Um, so I appreciate it. And I think that there will be some time for question and answer. I'll say about 20 minutes towards the end. Use the Q&A function and Emma can answer, ask those questions aloud. Okay, so if you're a faculty member, just type the question from your students right into from your podium in the Q&A at the bottom of that Zoom screen. Um, and we'll get to those questions. I have a few questions to kind of get things started. Um, but I'm sure Jordan and Kristen are uh, tired of listening to me, to me talk and ask questions. So I'm just really going to allow them to, to jump in. I want to thank Alumni Relations for uh, the Office of Alumni Relations for allowing this to happen. Um, and again, um, hopefully this is inspiring and, and can really bring value and answer some questions that you may have, you know, certainly some angst about it, the industry and so on and so forth. So um, without further ado, um, I'm going to let ladies first. So I'm going to let Kristen Lopez um, from Facebook introduce herself and tell her a little bit about her time at Johnson Wales, what she did after graduation and how she landed out there in uh, Palo Alto. Are you in Palo Alto? Uh, yeah, San Francisco technically, but okay. yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Kristen Lopez and I graduated with a P4 degree in 2013. Um, I'm currently overseeing all of Facebook's internal bread program. Um, so that means uh, nationwide we served, serve, you know, COVID has definitely changed things a lot. Um, thousands of people through um, hotlines, breakfast, lunch and dinner, self-serve sandwich, um, all different types of, you know, micro restaurants with different themes. Um, and my teams provide the bread for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I try to kind of um, put an emphasis on seasonality, whole grains, especially. I'm always sneaking them into everything. Um, and in my home life, I'm baking with whole grains 100% of the time, basically. Um, yeah, so while I was at Johnson & Wales, I spent a lot of time in the labs with the bread, like the bread guys, um, but especially uh, with Chef Sam, who just left recently. Some of you may have had the privilege to have him. Um, and I was just taking every opportunity that I could to get into the classroom. We're always doing video recordings, you know, any project they had going on, I was there. Um, and that is how you know, building those connections is how I um, came to have a job uh, at Bouchon Bakery. Originally, it was supposed to be in New York. That kind of fell through. And I, through Chef Stan's uh, guidance and, you know, a little bit of pushing the bird out of the nest, uh, <laughs> I moved across the country without knowing anybody um, to work in California. and really 
honed my skills at Bouchon Bakery, making bread for the French Laundry, as well as the Bistro. Um, little, everything from 20, 15 gram rolls that had to be super precise to, you know, thousands of baguettes and such. Um, yeah, and then student loans kicked in. And so I found myself looking for a higher paying job and ended up um, with Facebook, uh, with our vendor company, Flagship and kind of worked my way through there to now oversee the entire department um, where I do all kinds of, you know, recipe innovation, menu writing, uh, equipment design, layout, all the, you know, all the ins and outs of running a big bakery um, and in several locations across the country. So it's a very unique job. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, and yes, a big shout out to Chef Stan. He was, uh, you know, he, he's so proud of you and he, he talked talks about you all the time still does <laughs> I was just talking to him the other day and he was a huge influence on on me also yeah. um, he's just a kind-hearted human being so it's always good to hear his name um, and thanks for that uh, Kristen we certainly appreciate it um, I'm glad I don't have to make 15 gram rolls so it's kind of it's a little daunting <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan Polarski how are you sir Hey everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm Jordan Polarski. I graduated in 2016, also P4. Um, you know, I, I didn't have any prior experience before college and I fell in love with pastry. So I chose P4 to really just learn everything about pastry. So, you know, there's not, I get that question a lot. What's your favorite thing to make or what's your favorite thing to do? I love everything. Um, so that's kind of how I ended up in the hotel industry. I did a, my junior internship at the Ritz Carlton Amelia Island that is in Florida. Um, and then I got a job and moved there a week out of college, kind of made a big jump like Kristen did to the West Coast, um, moved there without knowing anything. And I kind of just fell into the hotel industry. So that is really all I know. Um, but the thing for me was at the, in the hotel industry, you can learn a lot of things. You know, we do show pieces. We do uh, huge banquets. We do bread. We do. Um, I was a pastry chef at the, our five star five diamond restaurant, Salt. I did very, very fine dining food, um, super gastronomic. Like I just love the science behind it. Uh, did a lot of fun things like that. And then I just moved over actually to the West Coast as well, um, to the nice weather. Uh, but now I work at the Ritz Carlton Bacara now in Santa Barbara. So I stayed with Ritz Carlton um, and that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, it's great. Johnson Wells kind of gave me that um, knowledge to do what I'm doing now. And I've also been grateful with uh, other opportunities. Um, like TJ was saying, Food Network. Uh, I was the Spring Baking Championship, uh, sorry, Spring Baking Champion, uh, season three. I judged on the Christmas Cookie Challenge uh, for two seasons. And I also won another competition. And I have a new one coming out uh, November 15th called Candyland, uh, based off the, you know, the greatest game ever, Candyland. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that is coming. Um, but really besides that, the industry is really where my heart is. Um, I work very hard. I love what I do. And that is all thanks to Johnson Wales and kind of what was instilled in me through not any specific chef, every chef there. So I definitely have a big thanks to that. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just living out here in California, being a California boy and uh, working. Here. And there's nothing wrong with being a California boy. I spent the uh... 15 years coast to coast back and forth especially as a faculty member i used to spend my summer down in california and i am i will say i'm jealous of both of you i love san francisco love santa barbara um not a bad place not a bad bad places to be um so we have we have time to, in this session and i think i want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into um you know now that you're both in the leadership role and you both graduated so recently I want everybody watching uh, to just understand that not, you know, what, three, four, five years ago, max, um, the, these two chefs were in those seats. Okay, so it happens quickly. And um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, I'll ask Kristen first, you know, what does it take to jump into a leadership role um, at, at, such, at such a young age? I'm going to make an assumption. It's probably, it's rude to ask, but um, I'm assuming you're both under 30. Am I, am I, is that a fair question? Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm, of course, again, jealous. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's super young. And, you know, what does it take? And, you know, as a, 
young professional coming out of Johnson and Wales and what, what did, and now in the position that you're in, what do you look for, you know, in the characteristics? So um, what does it take to sustain leadership at, you know, at your age? Um, and what do you look for, for just say, you know, demi chef or someone coming up behind you? Unmute. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, I am under 30. Um, and I find myself, especially um, a little bit earlier in my career, being um, my age of being really prevalent um, in some of the higher level decisions and things like that. Um, and so I think kind of taking that aspect and really owning it um, is very important. I am, I think just surrounding yourself with the types of people who really inspire you is so important. Um, you know, constantly working out my problems with uh, Chef Sam or some of my other colleagues, the people he would direct me to when I needed to know about equipment, um, but didn't know anything about, you know, commercial bread production. Uh, he'd say, call this guy, and then I would, and now there's somebody I can pick up the call when I find myself, um, you know, nervous about a deadline or feeling overwhelmed about a decision, somebody who can really just help ground you, I think is so important. Um, and for myself now, I especially look to um, the young women who are in my circle and take that extra step to really um, engage them into how to be a leader, how to be confident, how to not apologize for interrupting a group of men in the room. Um, that is so important to me personally um, that I think even if I was not in a corporate setting, I would be that way. Um, but I think, you know, being in a corporate setting, there's just some fundamental things that I hope to take with me wherever I go in my journey um, after Facebook, the sort of, you know, uh, assuming good intent, being open to feedback, really, you know, recovering and bouncing back and looking back on mistakes as lessons. Um, I think all of those are really important, especially for being green in the industry and um, just, you know, being fearless. Uh, that's a a very famous word in Johnson Wales, I think. Um, just go out there and do it. You know, you you might fall flat on your face. Um, you might have some sleepless nights, but it's you know it's important to believe in yourself and really um, try to figure out what you are passionate about. You know, I think um, sometimes we find ourselves with one idea of what our path will be. And, you know, I wanna be a bread baker. All I do is bake bread all day long. Well, nowadays I don't touch bread at all, um, hardly ever, but being good as a manager and a leader is something else that I've learned to really love about myself. Um, how to, you know, fight for what my team's needs are. You know, they work graveyard, so, you know, being okay with it not just being like, oh, I'm a chocolate, I'm a chocolatier, and that's it. Um, I think learning to embrace the whole picture of food service is so important. Um, and just, you know, being humble, absolutely. Never stop learning. We can all learn from each other. Um, I still use examples from employees who are with me for three months um, to help teach people, you know, like, you cut it, it looks kind of like a fish gill. Um, those kinds of things. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, no, I completely agree. Um, I, I, believing in yourself, I think is, is very important. And I always say the, you know, the person in the mirror, right? That's the person that, that's going to judge you. That's the person that you ultimately can kind of uh, disappoint, right? You're never going to disappoint me. I'm like, I'll always be there. Like I can't, I could never watch anyone completely fall your parents same way um sometimes i feel like a parent but um yeah, we 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 want to hold our students up we want to hold our employees up so um we always will right um but when you look in the mirror that's the person that, that you you're, you could disappoint the most um for the the chances you didn't take 
um, for, you know, the, you know, maybe hitting the snooze button a little too many times in the morning. Um, so you're absolutely right. Get out there. Like no one has a crystal ball. No one had, no one knows what the next step looks like. I guess that's the, the, you know, the word faith, right? It's the definition of the word faith. You just got to believe in yourself and trust that the next step is the right one. And if it's not, you know, then you just, you pivot and you make another, and you take another step, but don't let those, um, those, those missteps, um, you know, completely cripple the opportunity to um, take another one. So learn from those mistakes. Um, how about how about you, um, uh, Jordan? And I'll repeat the question. You know what? Uh, what are you doing right now to sustain leadership at such a young age? And um, what would you look like? Um, or what would you look for for um, you know young young chefs coming up behind you? Yeah, it's a good question because you know leaving college at a young age um, from a P4 program, you know, we withhold that as like something high and I, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder and being in the hotel industry, I got knocked down very, very hard. Um, but I really learned about myself a lot, you know, absorbing information, uh, willingness to learn, uh, listening and smiling, being positive, those are huge things in not only the hotel industry, just the industry in general. Um, that word pivot is huge, especially during this time. Um, so it's just to sustain that leadership that I'm in now, it's really to create a work environment that is uh, comfortable for everybody, um, understanding, um, but also like we still have things that are helping people to continuously learn and grow within the company, even though at this point in time, people are thinking, oh no, you know, I'm stagnant. This isn't going to happen. What, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so being a leader and being, being able to communicate and be personable and understand other people, um, have empathy, you know, those, all those words that I'm just throwing out there, it's huge in being a leader and, um, being 26 years old, I kind of had to figure that out uh, rather quickly, um, which I, you know, I don't mind at all. I had a goal. I was ambitious. I want to be where I am and I still want to grow. Um, so learning those things are very, um, are definitely a part of the job uh, as you grow in the industry. Um, to answer the second part of the question, to see, you know, someone that comes in. So actually, you know, we just had a new hire at my job and you, all those words that I'm just ex just explained is really what I look for. You know, a willingness to learn. Yes, you can be the most talented person in the room, um, but if you're not willing to learn new things, that's that doesn't help you in any case. Um, so to learn from the bottom up, almost like learning again from school, um, really shows um, not only your employer, but it really proves, I think, to yourself that you can do a lot of different things. Um, keeps you. Uh, it makes you versatile. You can do a lot of things. And an advice to the people like you guys that are going into the industry, um, employers take care of their good employees. So um, you showcase that. And you know what? Your talent will come out. You're ambitious. You're passionate. You're passionate. Um, your talent will show and it will sh shine through. And I think that's the biggest advice that I have for just moving into the industry. Um, sense of urgency, being quick on your feet, being able to pivot, Kristen was saying, just being able to adapt to a lot of different things. Uh, but most importantly, just having a positive attitude. I mean, I smile all day. I walk in in the morning and my employees hate me sometimes, but <laughs> smiling. So um, it creates a good environment because it's, it's very easy to be upset, especially during this time. So I, I could not agree with you more. It's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's just the things we need to accept, right? That, you know, sometimes we're going to have a bad day. Sometimes it's just, there's going to be hard work ahead of us. Um, but if you can um, do that with a smile on your face and be kind to the people around you, um, we can uh, create a culture where people want to come back, right? Sometimes I say the, um, sometimes the stakes are so low that, you know, this restaurant or this place is paying a dollar more an hour and what would keep someone from just going and taking that dollar more an hour? And how do you build this, this uh, respect and loyalty within your team? And it has to start with treating people the right way. Um, I'm a big proponent of that. Just um, making, showing people that they're, you know, they're 
um, celebrating their worth. Um, like you said, treating, you know, taking care of the, your employees. Um, that, that's a great message, Jordan. I really appreciate that. And thank you, Kristen. So Kristen, you know, there's, there's, a, there's another kind of big elephant in the room, and that's, you know, the, the pandemic and um, COVID. And, you know, what can you say to the students that would, um, you know, and, and all of us really, um, to kind of qualm a little bit of our anxiety and a little bit of our fear about you know, what's going on in the industry right now. Um, what do you think about that? Well, <laughs> that's a big question. Yeah, it's okay. um, I think, you know, one of the great thing, one of the blessings in disguise, so to speak, um, about 2020 is bringing up a lot of conversations that um, as a society, not just our industry, we were ignoring um, and having a lot of hard conversations, really doing a lot of unlearning um, for me personally, especially, um, you know, and I think one of the big conversations we saw was um, about toxic kitchen culture and kind of trying to bring that to light in the vein of um, racism, sexism, all that. And I think uh, that's going to kind of be, that's what I look, I have hope within, um, I guess is, you know, kind of the phoenix rising out of the ashes is hopefully um, people leave this pandemic with a greater appreciation for what um, we do for a living, um, you know, with everybody learning how to bake sourdough bread, um, hopefully they'll realize, hey, you know, uh, maybe the bakery down the street does a better job of this than I do. And it is worth $9 a loaf or what have you, or, you know, they want to ask more questions. Where do, where do you buy your grain from? Um, I think that's kind of what I'm hopeful about. Um, I think in the baking industry, especially bread, um, if you, as long as you weren't doing wholesale, you're, you're maybe even busier than you were before. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of friends doing all different types of things in the bread and pastry industry. And, you know, I see their heads whipping around, trying to pivot every move. Um, and, you know, not being able to hire enough help. So I think, you know, if you're in pastry and bread, you know, bread is life to me um, and to so many people. So I think, I think we'll be good. Um, and I hope that, you know, we continue to perpetuate more healthy uh, kitchen culture. And, uh, you know, like Jordan said, you know, really valuing your employees um, and knowing as an employee, you you know, there's a certain level you don't have to tolerate um, and valuing yourself within that, um, I think is so important. The only way we'll be able to really combat that kind of um, energy and culture is if we, you know, stand up against it. Um, I think that for me is where I'm hopeful it's gonna be really regenerative, um, yeah. Great answer, I, I completely agree. Um, with you that um, it's an opportunity to to turn our eyes inward a little bit and just look at look at who we are and um, and once we can you know take a take a breath and then I think that that next step forward will be a pretty monumental one uh, so thanks for that Jordan what are, um, what are you seeing is the you know is the hotel busier are you are you, are you seeing um, what are your thoughts on what the you know, what's going to happen with the, with the industry moving forward? Um, yeah, so, I mean, to, completely, to be completely honest, you know, I just went back to work, uh, I think, two months ago. So the hotel industry took a huge hit. I mean, obviously, people aren't traveling, uh, even the local people, just because of the pandemic. But um, there is always a positive. And I think the positive of it is there's actually, as things start to um, relatively come back to normal, um, a lot of people actually miss those things. So uh, like Kristen was saying, you know, being, you know, understanding kind of what we do as professionals, you know, even just pastries, um, you know, offering a dessert at a hotel at a beautiful hotel um, is bringing people back, you know, they're, they're coming back, yes, for a beautiful Santa Barbara weather, but they're coming back to eat my desserts, you know, they're coming back to eat our food. Um, so I think, uh, you know, 
I remember, I think my first year at school at Johnson Wales, I was told, you know, people will always need to eat and we will always have jobs. So, uh, Unfortunately for COVID, I really thought like, geez, we, pe people don't need to eat. You know, things are starting to close. Like, I don't understand what's happening. But that that um, saying really is just coming back. And it's coming back tenfold because everybody is trying to do the thing. They're trying to be, um, trying to eat great food. And I just think the hotel industry is coming back stronger. Yes, it's more transient rather than group guests um, because traveling as a huge group anymore is kind of, unheard of um but i'll be honest with you i've been trying we've been trying to get 95 percent occupancy i mean i have 700 people in my hotel for the past month and a half so there's people out there that want to travel there's people out there that want to eat um so i think that's really the positive thing yes you can think you can your mind will go in a million different directions but really if you hone in on that one <laughs> funny sentence people always want to eat so um i think that's a great piece of advice. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's not, it wasn't too long ago that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't sustain the phone calls from people that needed, uh, needed, you know, graduates, interns. Um, so I strongly believe that the pendulum is going to shift back. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that just as you said, Jordan, that, you know, people not only need to eat to, uh, for sustenance, but they enjoy, like, um, I wrote down a note here, Kristen, that, um, you said um, that, you know, what we do for people love what we do for a living or appreciate what we do for a living. And that's so true. Um, when we use the word artisan, um, when we use the word whole cuisine and, um, you know, people want to use their disposable income, right? Going out to a restaurant, going to a hotel, going to, um, you know, farmer's market to, to grab that baguette. Um, that's not something that's part of their monthly bills. That's not a fixed, uh, fixed cost. You know, that's, this is extra money that people want to spend on the things that we do. So let's always keep that in mind. And I think knowing that makes us do what we do a, a little bit more um, artisan, a little bit more whole cuisine, a little bit more fine dining, a little bit more love we put into that food because we know people are really going above and beyond to, um, you know, to, to, sh to hand over that dollar bill for what we have to offer. And I think that there is, me personally, as a customer, not even you take the chef coat off as a customer, I just want to go to Nick's on Broadway or Persimmon or somewhere around Providence and just I just want to enjoy, you know, good service, good food, good company. And that will always be a staple in, you know, in all of our all of our lives, just having that that feeling of comfort and that we offer that, I think is something to be hopeful for. Um, that the pendulum's gonna shift back. And I think it's only um, again, I think a matter of a, uh, I'll just say a vaccine at this point just to get us back out into, uh, into that, that world of normal, as we all say. Um, TJ, sorry, if I can speak to yeah, one more. Thing too. I, I think it's great. Everybody that's listening and watching us, I think it's amazing what your university, our university is doing to make you um, really versatile in the future. I mean, what, what has changed for me is yes, I do pastry every day, but guess what? I do other things too. I mean, I, I think I make French onion soup twice a week. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I used to hate it, but it's not, it's not something to be mad at. It's, it's more of like to speak to you guys of, um, you know, get into as many things as you can be uncomfortable as much as you can, because when things like this happen, this is why I think all our minds have been opened up. Um, you are an asset anywhere you go. So um, I'm not telling you to change your profession because I love what I do and I'll never change. Um, but um, knowing a lot of different things, which is what Johnson Wales is doing for you guys is I think tremendous. Great. I love how you said our university because it is. And once a wildcat, always a wildcat. So we really appreciate that, Jordan. Um, I do because of the, the, uh, this session is so much more, your audience is baking and pastry. Um, we have about 20 minutes left. Um, and I'd really encourage the faculty to let the students raise their hand and ask a question and then you know, just, just type it right into that Q&A um, feature. Um, I do see something and maybe we're using the chat. Um, no, 
No, so if you want to use the Q&A feature, go right ahead and um, I will monitor those questions from here. I don't see anything as of yet. Um, so faculty, if you got questions for Kristen and Jordan, please go right ahead and, and, uh, and type that in there and I'll monitor that. Um, don't be shy. And in the interim, um, you know, we asked all the big questions. So now, um, what was your favorite experience at Johnson and Wales? We'll have some fun questions. What, what did you love the most? Was it Operation Peace Love Bread? Was it um, baseball? You know, yeah. Yeah, and I, I am, I, Jordan, I am jealous because I didn't play baseball at Johnson and I should have. And now knowing that it was possible to go from, you know, you know the kitchen to the ball field to Food Network, I wish I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is one of the highlights of my four years at Johnson Wales is definitely being on, um, having a different group, a different uh, group of friends on that baseball field. Um, I still talk to them too. I mean, they're all alumni, so it's really cool. Um, but also I think one of my, from labs, I was just thinking about this actually in our last session, um, cause we were talking about how the industry has changed and obviously you guys can see that I have facial hair and I'm able to go to work with facial hair. It's really nicely trimmed, but, um, <laughs> my first class chocolates with chef Haas, um, she took the, we had the credit card thing and I got sent home. That was my first time I ever got sent home from a lab, um, to go shave. And then I also made a mistake. I think I had scented, um, aftershave. And I put that back on and I came back to class and she walked by me in the middle of class and was like, um, you have clone on. And she sent me home again. Um, so that was like, that was my first experience at Johnson Wales. Oh man. It was humbling. It was terrifying, but, um, it's really funny. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Chef, uh, Felder sent me home for the almost the same exact thing, but she's down at the Charlotte campus now, but, uh, yeah, that was the definitely a walk home. I wasn't too proud of because my side my sideburns were too long. I was like, yeah. man, really? Oh, <laughs> uh, how about you, Kristen? Um, so I have uh, hmm, I have quite a few memories, you know, of weekend antics. Um, but one in particular uh, is how I met one of my best friends from Johnson and Wales. Uh, we were helping when the USA baking team was practicing. Uh, highly encourage anybody to take that opportunity. Always, always, always wash dishes, just observe. Um, but we were tasked by uh, Chef Hits to take a speed rack down to his car um, to unload boxes of these beautiful vimoiserie to get painted or photographed or something. And you know how the wind blows. <laughs> <laughs> right off the water, yep, yep. It, it went the speed rack like rolled off to yeah. off the curb and it all smashed on the ground. And oh, I was the upperclassman. So I, and I knew Cyril pretty well. So mm. I just said, it's, it'll be okay, Stephanie. Like I'll, I'll break the news. Like I'll take the heat. <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, and so it was just a super funny, silly memory that I have. Um, and, you know, it all ended up being okay and salvageable and not that big a deal. But, you know, to us, it was like we End just the, destroyed the most beautiful artwork. Um, yeah. And now, you know, this girl, this woman, Stephanie, is one of my best friends. I see her all the time when I travel for work. So, yeah, it was a good, a silly memory. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. And, you know, on the call earlier, um, and I remember when you guys were here as students and, um, you know, the call earlier was some of my classmates when I graduated from Johnson Wales. And um, I always say, uh, especially to prospective students when they're looking at Johnson Wales, um, and even to you guys listening, um, who you meet in these classes and who your, your benchtop partners are, they will, I promise you, nine and a half times out of 10 will be somebody that you run into or collaborate in the future professionally. I think it's almost inevitable that you will. Um, that's a funny story. How many rolling racks have I lost uh, in my day? So again, you bounce back from those things. But I bet the birds ate really well that day, knowing there was some Chef Hits Vinoiserie on the ground. <laughs> um, all right, so I got a couple of questions for you guys. Um, this one, what things associated with Johnson & Wales University outside of the class would you recommend participating in clubs, down city offerings, traveling in the region, et cetera? I know you had just touched on that, Kristen, about, um, you know, Bread Team USA being here. 
um, and, and just apprenticing and being in the kitchen with them. Um, that's, I think, a no-brainer. Anytime something of that caliber is on campus, you should be kicking down the door to be a part of it. But what else um, club-wise, just getting involved, staying involved? Hmm. I definitely would encourage students to just kind of expand their palate, period. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, I came from a small rural town in New Jersey. Um, the first time I had Indian food was in the mall at Providence. Pretty good Indian food, too. Um, so just kind of really expanding your palate and you're going outside your cultural comfort zone, I think is so important. Um, and, you know, Jordan, I think you talked about being uh, pivoting and being able to do more than just baking and pastry. And I think taking those opportunities to heart, really. Um, one thing that um, Chef Sam always drilled into students was about being versatile, you know, understand how to use and hold a knife properly. Uh, as somebody looking for employees now, you know, you might be able to make a beautiful baguette, but if you can't chop onions, man, like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a hard one, you know? Um, so always practice your knife skills. Always. I'm cooking a ton. I cook so much, all different cuisines um, for my husband and I, and I'm always practicing my knife skills. Um, yeah, I think that and just, you know, okay. expanding outside of the culinary realm. I wish I had done that a little bit more, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I agree. I agree with you, uh, Chef. Um, and I promise to the students when uh, when COVID's behind us, we will uh, we will be back to doing skill sessions on Fridays and Saturdays. And those skill sessions are open to all students, not just in your in your major. Uh, there's knife skills and uh, so on and so forth, meat fabrication and fun stuff like that. Um, and I agree. You know, I, I've I've had to, um, and everyone, ev all the chefs on this call, um, I know Chef Stam's on here too. So I'll just say hi to to you guys on behalf of Chef Stam. Um, but I, they know I'm I'm no baker. I mean, we're gonna go up again. I'm like I'm Pillsbury, like pop the the canister open, crescent roll. Kidding, but. Uh, I'm certainly not at your caliber, guys, and I've had to, you know, force myself. I did. I was invited to do uh, a dinner in Portugal um, for some, you know, whatever. But I remember it was like you have to, you know, it's a six-course meal, and I'm like, I have to do the dessert. I'm nerve-wracking. I'm like sweating. I'm like, oh, uh, I came out okay, right? I had to dig deep. I had to remember my uh, anglaise to turn into ice cream. I had to, yeah, I had to dig deep into my uh, into my repertoire. But uh, yes, I agree with you on, you know, cross, you know, crossing your skills, learning as much as you possibly can. Um, and certainly when you said, I have a note that uh, cultural comfort zone, love that, stealing it, making a t-shirt, <laughs> but uh, introducing and introducing yourself to others through culture, your cultural, through, through food. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to be, I'm Italian. I don't have to cook everybody um, lasagna, but um, I'm also from the Northeast. You know, so if you meet if you meet somebody from Seattle or Texas, you know, whip up a batch of chowder or something and just show them like where you're from. I think that's a really cool way to make new friends um, and to get out of your comfort zone. So how how about you, uh, Jordan? Do uh, your time on campus outside of sports. What do you recommend the students get involved in? Yeah, I mean, so I was very busy with sports, but I know for a fact if I wasn't playing baseball or doing sports, I'd be doing anything I could to further my knowledge in pastry. Um, so any clubs, any, anything that you, you think you don't have time for, it's really, you have time for, and I think you should go out and do it, um, and just be involved, meet new people. It's really that type of thing. Uh, we talked about this earlier in our earlier session, but, you know, networking with people, it's really not even, um, just going out and, you know, uh, buying time. It's really going out and networking with people, networking with people like yourself that maybe think differently and uh, have different goals, different aspirations. Um, you be surprised what you, you know, come to find and maybe uh, what you thought you wanted to do for your whole life at this moment, it may change in three months and it might be based off of someone you met in these extracurricular activities. So I think that's a really 
it's just a, it's a really good thing to do. You should always be busy. Um, and you're in college. This is the perfect time to do those things. Um, because I'll tell you what, once you get out of it and you're working, you work in. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Enjoy it now. Um, question from Chef Brown. Um, I'll say hello on his behalf. So um, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh man, is this an interview, Chef Brown? <laughs> they have jobs already. <laughs> That's a tough question too, I think. Um, I'll take it for now, I guess. Um, my five-year plan seven months ago was not the same five-year plan I have now. And honestly, I'm in the process of thinking about my five-year plan again. Um, that's I love where I work. I love what I do. I'm, I'm going to continuously grow within the Ritz Carlton Hotel brand. Um, but you know what? My five year plan, it's that's a difficult thing. I think at, at that point in my life, I'm looking to um, find somewhere that maybe I, I really stay for a really long time. Um, so before that five years, I want to keep moving, keep doing taking those risks. Um, I mean, I lived in Florida. I lived, I lived on the East coast. I lived on the West coast. You know, I don't know where to go next, but I know whatever opportunities arise, I'm going to take them now. And that's my, my short-term five-year plan is really just take the opportunities as they come, especially during the time. I'm grateful and lucky that I have a job still, and I'm still doing what I love, but, um, you never know what could happen. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. They never, if it was, honestly, with Food Network and things like that, that may happen, but no expectations, always have a plan. So, All right. Cool. Yeah. Mine is definitely similar. My five-year goals were much different in January than they are now. Um, and I'm kind of in a holding pattern, I think, because I am not totally sure how COVID is going to shake out my industry. Um, not that I have fear of losing my job, but pivoting goals um, and things like that, you know, kind of really been taking a lot of time to reflect on um, my own career goals, as well as personal, you know, personal goals um, and self health, health and things like that. And uh, just really kind of looking inward that way. Um, so I don't really know, you know, we're kind of in a transitional period yeah. right now. Sure, we should be asking what's the five month goal. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, is there anything from Chef Pierre Marini? I'll say hello on his behalf. Is there anything you wish you learned beyond the P4? Um, the, the best answer is no, chefs. You did everything to prepare me for this. <laughs> and if it's a, uh, cause there's a, there's a good one on here. There, here here's a, Here's a follow-up to that one from Chef Stam himself, the man, the staminator. If you could get one do-over, what would it be in career or life? Mine would be to learn bread from Chef Stam and Miskovich and Hibbs and Alexander <laughs> and the whole team. Uh, I think a do-over, and it's not necessarily regret because it might come off as a regret, um, but a do-over I think would be not so... Uh head set on just being in the hotel industry and being an executive pastry chef of the Ritz Carlton. Cause that was really, I mean, that has been my mindset for, that's why I'm, I'm where I am now. Um, the do over and may, maybe would have been to expand my mind, um, and think about what else is out there. But other than that, I don't really have any other do over. So I think I did exactly what I wanted. Yeah, I think you guys are doing pretty darn good. <laughs> this <is> my assessment. <laughs> uh, I think I would probably have pushed myself harder with my sophomore internship. Um, I just kind of wanted to be able to live near my family. You know, I lived at home during that time. So I just kind of took a bakery job, was pretty casual and not too hard. Um, I kind of wish I pushed myself a little bit more there, um, you know, force myself to leave the nest a little bit sooner, maybe. Um, and also wish I had pushed myself a little bit more academically at Johnson Wales. Um, I, you know, slack academics is kind of the, was the term in my day. Um, <laughs> and 
wish that I had kind of taken a little bit more of that. And um, within my P4 degree, definitely wish I had learned a little bit more about um, or taking more seriously like business planning um, and like costing and things like that. You know, the rapid buildup of skills is so important, but you know, now here I am. Sometimes I think about opening up a bakery. I don't know really where to start. Um, <laughs> so kind of wishing I had that sort of background a little bit more sometimes too. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, I think I know a couple of people that could help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you know a couple of people. That, but uh, that was another question from Chef Free Marini about, um, do you think food service management would have given any added benefits um, to you before entering the field? And I think you answered some of those questions. Yeah, I think if we, um, you know, the, um, the four-year programs in this college, um, P4, the CABS program, we call it now, are, are very, uh, you know, there's so much more to learn, so much more to, especially in baking fish arts, so much more to master um, that. And I think in the chairs and the faculty would agree that in the rewrite of the P4 program, they'll probably fold in a little bit more. Um, you know, management. We're already seeing in the two-year program with the artisan cafe and things like that, where we're building a little bit more retail, a little bit point of sale type, type stuff um, and knife skills, as you had mentioned. Um, another question, uh, do you recommend study abroad? Uh, I can, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you did, Kristen, but my, my sophomore year, I did the uh, internship at ENSP in Lyon, France, and I recommend that highly, um, not only because it's amazing. I mean, I lived in Europe for three months, but that was when we did trimester, so probably now it would be longer. Um, but also, it's the cultural, it's the cultural shock I think a lot of people need, um, especially in our industry, the things that uh, the pastries, the breads, the stuff that they do in a different country is, um, I think, very valuable to learn um, and also just wrap your head around. I mean, if you want to learn more, I think traveling to other places, not only to local, you know, bakeries and stuff like that to eat and enjoy, but traveling to other countries is huge. And Johnson Wales gives you that opportunity. So, I mean, why not? Uh, work hard, take it, and I don't know, just learn as much as you can, because I, th I think that was a huge thing that I never thought I would be able to do, and I was able to do it, and that's because of Johnson Wales, and, and I'll never forget that, that's for sure. Yeah, I also did study abroad. Um, I went to Italy between my uh, junior and senior year. I highly recommend it. Um, you know, it's not that I learned a ton about bread or anything you know, um, specific to my career now, but it gave me so many great memories. It opened up my world to, um, you know, the Mediterranean diet, especially just really understanding and appreciating quality ingredients and where they come from and how they're made and the artists, the people making the giant wheels of Parmesan um, just really added to my appreciation of um, understanding where my food comes from um, and for me now that manifests in um, really trying to choose the best grains um, that, that are grown by people who practice, you know, regenerative farming techniques and are much more sustainably done um, and really highlighting the whole grain. Um, that the only regret I have is that it knocked off, uh, you know, I graduated in the end of the winter term instead of the spring. I would have liked a few more months Oh, that's great. I'm glad you, um, you both had an awesome experience there. Um, and then one more question, and I think we will wrap from there. But um, suppose you're hiring somebody. What is one characteristic that gets them? Um, yeah, someone, don't move the questions around. Um, sorry. Suppose you're hiring somebody. What is the one characteristic that gets them considered? And what is the characteristic that pretty much disqualifies them right off the bat? Yeah, got to be the bad guy here, Kristen. <laughs> okay, um, disqualified right off the bat. Um, definitely, if they're not willing to try and shape roles with their non-dominant hand. Um, <laughs> for me, like, even if they're not, even if you can't do it, just the exercise of trying to do it 
is shows so much about your intentions and your character, um, how much you want to grow in the profession. Um, another little tactic that I do um, is I always make sure to leave candidates alone with my employees um, and give them space where the, you know, the person they're trying to impress uh, isn't there in the room to really see if any, um, you know, characteristics come out. I know it sounds kind of sneaky, um, but I think it's so important to know how um, they treat your staff. Because for me, my staff has always been family. You know, when you work graveyard, you have to kind of love each other because um, you're the only people you see. And so, you know, I want to make sure that they're treating every level of employee with the utmost respect. They're courteous to our dishwasher. They're courteous to the people who are um, cleaning the floors in the middle of the night, that, that sort of thing. Um, that's really what that vetting is about and that they're teachable as well. Um, so I think that's, those are really what I have to say. <laughs> Perfect, love it. Anything you want to add, Jordan? Um, I think for hiring purposes, uh, I kind of said that I don't want to beat a dead bush, but, you know, someone who really wants to just learn and is really passionate. I mean, I think, especially in my industry, hotel industry, I can teach you a lot of things. Um, it's almost like 80% um, learning and like 20% actual skill um, because you can have a lot of skill. But if I can't teach you and I can't um, really get you to understand our standards and what we want from our pastries per se, um, then it's going to be really difficult and you're not going to be able to, I think, um, immerse yourself in the hotel, hotel industry. So um, definitely, yeah, willingness to learn, good attitude, positive, I'm positive. I'd like to work in a positive environment. Um, I don't really want any Debbie Downers or someone that's going to complain about, I don't know, working 15 minutes overtime. Um, but other than that, I think I don't know what disqualifies you right off the bat. I think disqualifies you. <clears throat> um, and again, speaking from my own experience, I think being working for Ritz Carlton and a great brand um, experience um, is, I wouldn't say a key factor, but um, someone who isn't switching fields, someone who really understands what they want to do. Because I think when once you get into the hotel industry, it's really a, it's a, it's just straight path. You know, if you're, if you're coming to work for me in a pastry kitchen at a Ritz Carlton, you're going to be doing pastry. So, um, I kind of want you to have basic understandings, fundamentals. Um, yeah. And that's me personally, because people above me that have hired me didn't really care that I, you know, had a P4 degree from Johnson Wales, but, um, to me it helps out. And especially during this time, I think it's, it jump starts a lot of, um, creativity and fun things. All right. Awesome answer. And um, I'm doing my math correctly. It's just about lunchtime for you guys. Um, just about the, just about class to start time for everyone watching. And, um, but I do, before I turn it back over to the alumni relations team, Jordan and Kristen, I want to thank you so much. You are so incredibly kind. Um, even talking about how, you know, Kristen, you mentioned you know, treating everybody at every single level with kindness and respect. Jordan, you definitely um, reiterated that and smiling and being nice and having a positive attitude. Those are the change agents that we're gonna see <clears throat> to build a better culture um, moving forward. Those are the things that are gonna get the industry back. Um, um, just your attitudes alone, I think are, are um, almost um, contagious, okay? Um, you guys are amazing. You deserve every single thing that you have. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Everyone tune in and, and check out Jordan on the 15th of November um, with his new show on the Food Network. Kristen, make sure you tell uh, Zuckerberg we say hello <laughs> and keep being amazing. Um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time um, out of your day and your busy schedule to be here with us and sharing um, some of your attitudes and some of your um, experiences with our students that I am sure will be um, right behind you, right on your heels as they uh, turn around and graduate and um, help make this a better better world through food. So uh, thank you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren to, to wrap the program. Thank you.
Thank you, TJ, Jordan, and Kristen. Um, today's discussion was wonderful. You're all a wealth of knowledge and your experiences you shared with us were inspiring and so appreciated. Um, please, re please remain connected with us. We are so proud of you. Um, and I'm excited to watch Candyland as well. Um, students, thank you for your participation in today's session. Alumni Relations is pleased to bring you programs like this. And one day soon, you will be the, an alum and able to come back to Johnson & Wales to share your story. And we hope that you will. Uh, this concludes today's session. Although a virtual presentation does not lend itself to post-event mingling, please feel free to connect with one another virtually to continue the conversation and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.